Speakers Talks. Uh, time is really fast spent, but hey, welcome to the live drive. My name is Kola Wale, and I'm here with you all the way till 9 p.m. per usual. It's a wet Thursday. Uh, it's a wet Thursday, and I've been saying this since the inception of the week that we could most likely have a wet week. And I hope you're ready, and I hope you have been prepared, uh, like uh, forward thinking Nigerians that we all are, correct? Fantastic. Okay, so here we are with uh, today's episode of The Office. The Office is proudly brought to you by the Chattad Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, CIPM, and Lagos Talks 91.3. Our guest this evening is someone who is seasoned in the HR, in human resources, and business uh, in general, is a business professional. With over three decades hands-on experience, he also holds an MSc in Industrial Sociology from the University of Ibado. Um, you know, he is someone who is an alumnus of the Lagos Business School as well. So there's a lot to unpack from our guest this evening. He is uh, a fellow of the Chattad Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, FCIPM, uh, Mentoring and Career Development Institute. FMCDI and Nigerian Institute of Training and Development FITD. So there's a lot to unpack from our guest this evening. And within the next few minutes, we will definitely uh, get to learn a lot from him uh, on the program. Our topic, if you are probably wondering, is the why, the what, and the how. The why, the what, as well as the hell. All right, our guest is Tunde Adebayo. Good to have you join us, sir. How are you today? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right. It's and a great day. Yes, indeed. I hope uh, you are coping quite well with uh, the rain. Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. All right, so uh, like I said, uh, our guest is quite seasoned. Over three decades under his belt, is a multiple excellence award winner as personnel manager of the year. Uh, take away back to 1996 and 97 at uh, the Nigerian bottling company PLC, bottlers of Coca Cola, and uh, the Chattad Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, CIPM. Excellence is now Oscar award for best HR practices in the manufacturing sector for the year 2012 and uh, overall winner uh, year 2015 amongst others he facilitated and implemented change initiatives as part of organizational re-engineering and consolidation process in both local and multinational organizations he also played a leading role in the acquisition merger and consolidation of not one, not two, but three insurance companies into a legacy company. Uh, someone with uh, diverse experience in the public and private sectors of the economy, specifically the civil service, banking, financial services, and manufacturing as the FMCG industry. He held a succession of senior executive management positions with emphasis on compensation and benefits, industrial relations, HR systems, general services, project management, and manufacturing startup and operations. Um, there's a lot to unpack from his uh, profile. Time will not permit us, but uh, he has acquired diverse learning experiences within and outside Nigeria while still learning. He also enjoys sharing his knowledge, which he's going to do today, and experiences with um, upcoming HR and business managers. He currently serves as managing partner, John Alexson, Integrated Services Limited, and uh, and on the an advisory board of uh, some organizations, including a non-profit organization. Oh, so uh, Mr. Tunde Adebayo, FCIPM, is our guest this evening. He's a managing partner, John Alexson, Integrated Services Limited, and he joins us this evening via Zoom. Um, I'll just reconnect with him shortly. Uh, we will get him again. I think he just dropped off just for a few seconds. 
Uh, but uh, by and large, our conversation would center around the why, the what, and the how. I have no idea where this is headed. I'm definitely trusting him to uh, push us through the process of uh, this topic in itself, okay? And if you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you have inputs, you are an HR expert, you're just starting your career. I mean, these gentlemen and ladies we bring on the office are seasoned professionals and uh, they could be potential mentors to you or coaches to you, people who could um, expand your horizon, get you thinking about um, how well to be best at what you're trying to do right now in terms of your career. So uh, if you have questions, you have thoughts, you have inputs, feel free to send them across to me on WhatsApp. Uh, feel free to push your questions on WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp is 0809. 234 5913 0809 That is the uh, the WhatsApp number, just in case you want to send in messages. So if you're in HR, you are a CIPM member, you are thinking about uh, venturing into it as a career, perhaps you're still contemplating on the whole idea of becoming a human resources expert or a manager. And this is definitely the, the, the conversation you should be listening to, or sort of conversations you should be uh, leaning towards and listening to at this point in time. So I'll go fetch our guest again. I think there's a problem with the connection right there. And then when we come back, uh, we'll maximize the time left and uh, delve deeply into the conversation this evening. You're listening to 91.3. This is Lagos Talks. Hello, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, we're going back now. Just uh, Hello. Yeah, can I'm you hear me? Okay, okay. All right, so we're going back again. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Very clearly. All right, fantastic. So we're going I can in. hear you clearly. All right, so we're going in now, sir. Okay. Thank you. We have our guests uh, is is rejoined us uh, despite the odds. <laughs> I saw resilient somewhere, so I'm not even surprised that he's back. You know, despite the odds. Uh, all right, so our guest is back, and we are good to go. Mister Tunde Adebayo, FCIPM managing partner, John Alexson, Integrated Services Limited. So let's get up to speed with. Uh, our conversation this evening, shall we? Uh, let's push over to our first question and uh, we'll make it quite, uh, uh, do it quite quickly. Uh, for the sake of those hearing, there's a, there's a term called ADR, right? So we're talking about the why, the what, and the how, but it's ADR. And I'm very curious as to what this is all about. Uh, so for the sake of those hearing uh, the term or the acronym ADR for the first time, uh, would you mind telling us what that means? Uh, what is ADR and why is it important for any organization? Okay, I hope... Uh... The connectivity is good enough now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 back now. So I was asking about the old ADR. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Loud. So uh, would you mind telling okay. us about what that means? What is ADR? Uh, what does that even mean okay. in terms of any organization? Okay, ADR uh, is an acronym, I would say, and uh, it stands for Alternative Dispute Resolution. And uh, simply put, I haven't described uh, what the acronym is. Uh, it simply means uh, dispute resolution outside of the official judicial mechanism. That is outside of litigation. Instead of going to the courts, you're looking for res resolving issues and dispute outside of the court. Uh, ADR denotes a wide range of dispute uh, resolution processes and techniques uh, that parties can use to set to disputes with the help of a third party. The goal of ADR is actually to provide a forum for the parties to work 
towards a voluntary consensual agreement. Uh, I guess I will stop at that. Mm. Uh, I haven't explained what the ADR is. All right. Alternative dispute resolution. So looking for solutions to disputes that are outside the you know usual litigation, litigation you uh, yes. terrain. Okay, fantastic. So it means when there are problems, there are other ways you can settle things that we don't have to go to the courts. Okay. Uh, in many African countries, attempts to address uh, poor access to justice, you know, have led to uh, the promotion of ADRs, like alternate, like you said, alternative dispute resolution processes in the form of, you know, mediation. It could be negotiation. It could be arbitration, etc. But what would you say alternative dispute resolution? is effective amongst Africans so far? What, what, what Which of these options would you say is perhaps the most effective way? Oh, beautiful. Uh, uh, I would say that if you go historically, the question is about uh, the African setting. And I would say we're probably going back in history. The truth is that before the judicial system, there was also a system and that system perhaps still exists, maybe not as uh, visible as the judicial system today. Uh, wherever you have two or more persons, the likelihood to have a dispute or conflict, which is a disagreement or misunderstanding, uh, seems to be just part of nature because you may have a reason to have a different view. Uh, in the African setting, as you have probably asked, uh, we always have ADR. We have always had ADR. And historically, disputes have always been settled without the judiciary. Uh, you would come to think of it, know that in the past, issues are taken to family heads or they are taken to the traditional rulers such that they could either uh, mediate, like you said, mediation means being neutral, uh, while helping the people to get solution to the problem or the issue at hand. Uh, so you have a lot of mediation, conciliation going on uh, from the past and in the African setting. And that is still there till date uh, because you still have issues being discussed, resolved uh, in the family or in the social setting. Even economic or investment matters are sometimes discussed uh, outside of the court. So we still have all of them Around, but mediation seems to be more prevalent uh, in recent time. Okay, you're listening to the office here on Lagos Talks 91.3 on this very wet Thursday evening. This is a live drive. Um, so I've got Tunde Adebayo, FCIPM, our guest this evening, uh, an HR expert with uh, a lot of experience underneath his belt. Uh, we're talking about ADR, the why, the what, and the how. Uh, that pushes us to our next question. Um, I mean, do you, do you think African organizations, or how, how often do you think organizations in Africa, you know, invest in training for conflict mediation, especially in Nigeria? Do we even put in so much effort into that? Do we allot some resources to train people for conflict resolution, uh, such as mediation? Uh, do we, is that a culture? Is that a corporate culture in Nigeria? Okay. Um, thank you, Kola Uh Realistically, uh, speaking about the context of Nigeria, uh, I'm not sure that we have a sufficient opportunity or training exposure in this area. Uh, mediation in itself, uh, in the formal setting, uh, has only recently gained grants in Nigeria uh, because uh, it is not prevalent as a formal uh, avenue for learning. But let me say this, that I'm aware uh, that a few organizations are involved in training and equipping people for mediation, uh, acquiring mediation skill. Uh, I'm quite familiar with the fact that uh, CIPM in itself has the mediation and reconciliation, I mean, conflict reconciliation uh, committee. And they always uh, give exposure to people to learn. 
Also, I'm aware that the Lagos multi-door courthouse uh, train and equip people uh, to acquire mediation skills. Uh, but beyond this, uh, ones that I am very, very familiar with, I know that certain uh, profession or courses also expose people to learning uh, about mediation and probably conciliation and arbitration. Uh, some professions are exposed to that, and that's perhaps uh, the best that I've seen happening. Not many companies are sending their staff to mediation courses, but the courses are available and are actually very useful to ensure that organizations do well in terms of ensuring tranquility and peace in the business environment. So essentially, it is there for the taking. The, the question now is, are they taking it? Are they maximizing the resources available? Okay. Not, not too sure whether people are maximizing it to be candid. All but right. it's there. A few organizations are, are sending people for those courses, but not much has been done. All right. Let's talk about performance. I mean, as an HR expert, you're keen on many things, including performance. And one of the things that HR experts are also uh, focus on uh, in an organization is performance evaluation, performance management, etc. How would you say that ADR impacts overall organizational performance? Have you noticed any connection? Is there any link somewhere? Is there a cause and effect situation between ADR in itself, which is alternative dispute resolutions, uh, and general or overall organizational performance? Oh, beautiful. Um, I hope I'm still audible. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Um, I would say, quite frankly, that ADR impacts organization, the individuals, the teams in the organization, and in fact, the performance of the organization. How? The how for me is the fact that the environment of work is very important in ensuring that people perform at their best. And to be able to achieve that, ADR has provided a platform to ensure that there is peace and tranquility in the workplace. Instead of en incurring huge costs in litigation when you have conflict and dispute, you can quickly resolve that. And that in itself ensures that you minimize the loss of time. And you know in every productive activity, time is money. Uh, beyond the fact that you lose or you gain time by following the ADR instead of litigation, you also save cost. Besides that, because you quickly resolve issues, you engender mutual trust and confidence within the workforce, whether as a team or the workforce and the management team. So in doing that, you ensure that people perform at their best. In actual fact, ADR preserves relationship. It ensures that you have a smooth relationship. And it is only when you have smooth relationship that the best of mankind would come in the workplace. So if you don't have uh, any grudge, you don't have any unresolved issue, the likelihood that you perform at your best is far higher. So it, it, it impacts heavily on the environment of work and the culture. And to that extent, it impacts on individual performance and productivity, which uh, translates to the performance of the organization. Okay, in Thank case you. just joining, you're listening to 91.3 Lagos Talks, and our guest this evening has been doing justice to a concept uh, called ADR, which he has explained to mean alternatives, it's an acronym, Alternative Dispute Resolution. That is what ADR means. And uh, our guest this evening is Tunde Adebayo. FCIPM is a managing partner, John Alexson, Integrated Services Limited. We've been pushing across a few questions to our guests this evening, but we're not done yet, not quite. Um, I would love to ask our guest again uh, regarding the types of dispute resolution options that we have in Africa. We have quite a number of them. Um, we have mediation, we have, uh, you have meetings and all of that. You have negotiations. I'm also curious to know, in terms of what works best in Africa, 
what exactly okay maybe in nigeria right now in nigeria right now what exactly is the best option or what has proven to be the best option so far in terms of adr options okay do we have you back are you still there hello yes i am sorry about okay. this the network right. has been challenged. Right. yeah yeah so so I'm, I'm, i want to know what exactly works best we have a very peculiar work environment in nigeria um i i think there's a link between adr in itself and the african culture and even the nigerian culture you don't want to escalate things let's settle it first you know and if it becomes beyond our control we can now allow the justice system settle things so i think it's our cultural value adr is just grammar that we're calling it it's it's a cultural thing it's an african thing my opinion but when you look at nigeria what would you say is the best among the options when it comes to ADR? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it would be difficult to say this is the best. Uh, reason being, ADR in itself offers a very creative solution to workplace grievances. So you need to first consider the details of the grievance and what the parties want from the resolution before you come to terms with which one will best serve the purpose of uh, the mechanism or the technique you want to use. Uh, in terms of prevalence, uh, you have uh, mediation and conciliation uh, to be something you see or you hear or you see people do uh, more frequently. Uh, but in investment matters and business matters, if you go and look at a uh, simple agreement uh, between uh, B2B, business to business, you'll find the fact that there will be a clause that mentioned the fact that they would go to arbitration first, which is attempting to have a third party look at the terms of the agreement and then uh, helping them out rather than seeking litigation first. So you find that for different purposes, you use uh, each of the mechanisms. The general or overarching principle is the same. You're inviting a third party, uh, usually a neutral third party, to ensure resolution. So you see mediation more in the workplace. You see a bit of uh, peer review, because sometimes it's just a simple issue of misunderstanding. And then ombudsman also do come up when it is a case that requires someone who is neutral to uh, probably give a decision, a verdict on, on an issue. Okay. But so you have it in different ways, or mediation more. All right. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, is it in all cases, is, is every possible scenario covered when it comes to um, choosing or opting for ADR? Can ADR handle every kind of problem within an organization? <laughs> Certainly not. Let me let me let me hit the nail on the head. Certainly not in all cases. But ADR is quite very good and useful in solving problems between employee and employee versus another employee. Uh, in fact, union management issues like and government are in the tripartite discussion and all whatnot. What they are doing essentially is negotiation which is a part of, yes, they've not gone into litigation. Once you step out of discussing, communicating, sharing thoughts, that's when you then go back and you're looking for evidence to uh, achieve a win-loss situation. For mediation, it's always a win-win situation. It's like the focus is that parties involved are happy. They got a solution driven by themselves, not solution that is handed over to them. In the law court, a party would win and a party would lose. In mediation, a pa both party wins because they are going to drive the solution and the resolution by themselves, a practical and workable solution that they would be able to deliver on. And it is always about interest. Okay. It is about what is the interest of the parties involved and you are working towards achieving a common interest. So you achieve that much more. And in the workplace, like I said, employee versus employee, employer versus workers, and in terms, in some cases, shop floor versus supervisor. You have a situation where shop floor uh, guys 
aren't willing to work with a supervisor anymore, how do you deal with that? You probably don't need a mediator in that. You need um, ombudsman because that will be a forum where the matter will be investigated and some truth will be made open and then the issue is resolved. So you use the technique that best suits the issue on, on ground. All right. Thank you. So, so I'm thinking now, uh, the people who are going to be involved in a case where uh, ADR is needed, uh, I, I, I'm guessing a representative from the HR unit, definitely. Um, maybe the line ahead. Or tell me more about the people involved, basically, in, in few words. Um, when ADR has to happen and there's a case that has to be resolved, who are the integral people within an organization that are pivotal in effectively implementing an ADR resolution process? Oh, okay. Because of the principles uh, of ADR, there are certain principles that must be guided, uh, which includes confidentiality. Confidentiality is that short. Neutrality of the uh, mediator or the conciliator is also very important. The parties usually are just those who have the issue, the one who has reported the matter, the one who has also been reported. I use parties for both of them. And then you have the neutral third party, which is the mediator in this case. And in some instances, they have representatives. But those representatives are just there. They cannot serve as lawyers because they are not bringing any evidence. It is like I told you, it is driven by the interest of the parties concerned. So principally, those are the three people or the three parties you would need to have. HR as a mediator may be challenging uh, in the sense that sometimes we are seen as part of management. And at the same time, when you go into mediation, you have the uh, very equivalent task of proving your neutrality, which is also very important because uh, mediation is set on the principle of voluntarism. If, the, if a party is not happy, having you as a mediator or the conciliator or arbitrator, you would mm -hmm. not be able to achieve the purpose. So for HR, uh, sometimes organizations will step out to seek mediators from outside their own uh, organization. These services are provided by some companies also. So it is not compulsory that the HR practitioner be the mediator who be someone yeah. that is neutral or trained in that area. Yeah, very correct when you say that a lot of employees would already see the HR as part of management. So I uh, shouldn't be expecting anything good coming out of this. But I like the way you put that, uh, a neutral element so that both parties are satisfied and then they can proceed. So both parties have to be satisfied with the mediator or the neutral elements for an effective uh, resolution to the problem. Correct? Yes. Absolutely. All right. All right. We need to go right now. Thank you so much, our guest this evening, the very brilliant and uh, impeccable Mr. Tunde Adebayo, FCIPM Managing Partner, John Alexson, Integrated Services Limited. We look forward to having you at some other time. And thank you so much, despite uh, the glitches here and there, for giving us value in short, uh, such a short period. Thank you indeed. Thank you for having me, Kolaoli. All right, have a good evening. Good evening, I'm back. All right, so that's about it. We had a very short time, but I think we maximized it to the fullest. Thank you so much once again. We shall go on a quick break. Up next is Critical Thinking. The office is proudly brought to you by the Chattad Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, CIPM, and Lagos Talks 91.3 FM. My name is Kola Wale. Up next, Critical Thinking.